I've seen action captains and I've seen word captains and there's no real difference but they are born leaders and they just have this pe these people just want to do and go where they want to go. If you're a leader, you look over, there's someone following you. I don't care what your creed, what, how good you are, what you've studied and how good you think. You walk, you look over, nothing there, no leadership. Mark Murphy, highly skilled, works hard, knows the game back to front, young, enthusiastic and screaming out for success. Waiting, waiting, Jamison did the job and then Murphy builds it home and Carlton take a big lead. One of my common threaded criticisms is from a player group or a player, when he leaves the club, I didn't have the right communication, they didn't talk to me. Well, I've set in motion over the last 15 years uh, at various clubs, something where every player has to be spoken to about his game or about himself, that we're not a, not a hello, how are you going, great day, it's going to be, we're going to be get wet in the weekend. No, what are you doing off, off, off here? How's your studies going? Tell me about your football, tell me about your opponent. Let's see how you're going, let's, let's do some video work. And that's actually documented every week. Every player must have some communication with these seven coaches. They've got to feel comfortable. You know, this is not a, it's not a fitness exercise, this is for their touch. They've got to come away from it feeling very, very comfortable. Good hands, good hands, boys. Good hands, good run. What's up, boys? Good. We get a cross-section of the community. I think it's so important as a coach, not to just a coach for football, but coach for life. And find it, the more you find out about these people, the more you can relate to them. Because I'd say in my experiences at, at football, I've just about covered most scenarios. And so you can actually lend a shoulder to some of these people. I encourage my coaches to, uh, and I'll use the term, love them to death because they, a lot of kids need loving and they'll play good football for you and, and you build a really good rapport. I can go back through my football coaching days from day one to 29 years later and virtually all the way through there's little, there's people that you've had, you know, really good close associations with. And I'll be very disappointed if most of them don't stop and have a chat to you. I reckon if you haven't sampled some real setbacks, you don't really know what it's like as a coach. And by that I'm saying is I played in some ripping sides, I played some poor sides. I played well, I played poor. I played disciplined, I played undisciplined. I played well and I played injured. And I've been right through that the whole gamut for 12 years of football. It served me very well. I hated it as a player because I wanted to be winning, 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 winning. But it didn't. But when I started to coach, no player could come to me and say, you don't understand me, because I reckon I understood most players. His awful family, he's also very mindful of the fact that as much as he pushes his staff uh, and the coaches to, to do everything to make sure that we're well prepared, you know, he'll also say, you need to go home and spend some time with your family. So I think that's a really good balance and, uh, and that makes people want to work harder for you too. He's been fantastic around the place, breath of fresh air. As I said before, he's made the staff feel really, really part of it and, and the team has really responded already. So that, that's the big thing he's brought and uh, he's, he's a hard man, let's make no about that, but um, he can gel the whole group together, that's what he's good at. That he look, yeah, that he gives you, you know, like, like the hawk, I think I, I pronounced it as a, as a hawk, when he gets that evil stand, you, you know he did something wrong, he gives you that look and you know, you sink back into your, into your shell a little bit. It's pretty easy to talk to. Um, got to pick the right moments about when to joke, but um, I think it's the same with, with any coach. So, uh, yeah, he's been a bit of a breath of fresh air to a few boys. So, um, yeah, now games are starting to come along now. He's starting to get a little bit more anxious, but um, no, he's been great. You know, you think of Nick Malthouse as a scary, scary person and, you know, he's intimidating, but once, once you get to meet the guy, you know, he's a very family oriented person and, you know, he loves his family and he, and he gives a lot to you. And he's not scary after all. People get a bit caught up in, they see me as a football coach on, on, the, on the box. Game time. That's operation time. That's, that's fully committed to that cause. Nothing else interests me at that time when I step into that coach's box or go into that ground. 
to the end of that, that is that is club time, that is player time, that is me giving everything I possibly can, and they and they judge people judge you on that time. I am a different person away from that time. I enjoy a lot of things, a lot of things, and you know, outside of family, I enjoy international news. I enjoy the bushwalks. I enjoy. Um, all the bits and pieces I touch on that I'm no good at anything, but anthropology, astronomy, uh, biology, etc. I like to know it. I'm not good enough for it, but I like to know it. But when I put my game day head on, you're judged. I don't think you ever get used to the box. My poor old mum, my old late mum, she said, um, you don't swear in a box. I said, no, mum. I try not to. And I, and I do. Every time I think of going to the box, I think of her words. And it's like the white line fever. And I've got to show, you know, I come away from there and think, oh, I think I might let my mum down today. I, I know one thing for certain over, over, the, over the journey. If I don't sleep the night before a game, I know I haven't covered everything. If I sleep, I know, virtually I know I've covered everything. And I, I, I sleep pretty soundly most match nights. All it is is just rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. You know, just going over and over and over. Make sure you haven't missed anything. The only thing I have to worry about is my ticket. Mm, good so, luck, uh, darling. Thank you, darling. My time going to a match is the only real time that, um, you know, you, you really do have just that free, and I call it my time, selfish time, my time. You know, I'd like to have a kick before I go. Now, is that a superstition? No, it's just I'd like to get rid of a bit of nervous energy. And, and I haven't really found anyone that wants to have a kick with me yet. And that's really, at, at the previous club I did, I had someone who was religiously looking for me and me for him to have a kick of the footy. And it was good because we enjoyed each other's company. But, um, until, we get, until you get into a new rhythm in a football club, you don't want to impose on people. You know, I'm calm right now. Two or three years ago, grand final, Mab Cup, gridlock. I got out of the car. I got out of the car and walked. And then it got into the driver's side and drove. I walked. And, uh, but I wasn't Maverick, because dozens of other people were late, inclusive of our opponents. So. It was madness, but I didn't know how far down the track I could go. So it was far better to make it out and walk, even though I look, you know, like I am dressed in the club uniform, that sort of stuff. Didn't start to worry about preciously, you know, what you look like, just get there. But I'll give you, if I can get this up, I'll give you a bit of a rundown of what I really listen to. It's not bad. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song. I'm blowing your ears apart, yeah. <laughs> and also Bee Gees. Love the Bee Gees. Is this showing my age? See, now we're hitting now. I'll get there nice and relaxed. Great sax. Hey? Some good ones. I'm not, I'm, I'm old fashioned. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, break your eardrums. There we go. I don't think it's loud enough yet. Although I've been very fortunate with family because they've always stuck to whatever team I am, they think I'm the team and they support that team and they give 100%. He's really loving it. I think having that year away and sort of having, almost having that taken away from him, as the kids said to me, we didn't realise how much he missed it. They thought it was finished at the end of the calling, but they were very disappointed. Really done with football, really quite uh, disappointed 